Hi, in this tutorial I'll be talking about debugging JavaScript. JavaScript is one of the most important language for web applications and it is used to create interactive and powerful web applications. If you know JavaScript and don't know how to debug JavaScript, you are not a very good JavaScript developer. So in this tutorial, I'll be going you through each and every step of debugging JavaScript. So what is debugging? Debugger lets you find out how each piece of your code works and how to detect problems that occur during the development of softwares. Actually all the softwares have its uh, some debugging tools. All the IDEs and all the languages have its own frameworks for debugging that particular language. Particularly in JavaScript that runs on browser, every browser have built in debugger tool and in this tutorial I'll be talking about debugger tool that is built in Chrome. There are many other extensions in Chrome uh, that we can also use but the built in uh, Chrome extension Chrome developer tool of uh, uh, Google Chrome browser uh, contains all everything that we need to debug JavaScript. If you want to use another uh, browser like Firefox or a Safari uh, for, for Firefox there is an extension called Firebug and for the Safari there is an extension called Web Inspector that you can use to debug JavaScript. So there are different things that uh, debugger can do for us. Uh, we can pass the code in between the execution of program. All right, And once it is passed uh, we can go through line by line and check out each variable that what's value exist in that variable and then we can uh, we can verify that if the required value of that variable exists there or not and that can be easily uh, found uh, by just hovering our cursor on it and if the value doesn't exist there uh, we know that that particular line uh, is getting needs to be debugged uh, and once it is paused we can also add a condition that uh, stop the execution of program if that particular condition matches we can also do that uh, and uh, before proceeding further and debug actual program I want to talk about uh, developer console that we can use to uh, diff for different purposes like we can access different variables we can apply uh, different operations on those variables and we can access DOM uh, document object model uh, for uh, checking out in the developer console of our browser that what needs to be done if we do like this so first I'll be talking about developer console so now I'll be talking about console dialog inside Chrome developer console tool so this is the code that I I created and I showed you that how to create autocomplete dropdown with the help of code JavaScript if you want to see that check out my other JavaScript tutorial but I have opened it uh, to show you that how to access different kinds of elements of HTML different kinds of variables of my script file inside the console and what are the different operations that we can uh, get help from the console uh, dialog so I need to open it first so let's run it you can see that it has uh, if I hover it I have dropped down now uh, I need to open the developer console of this page I need to press F12 in order to open it up all right and this is the console dialog. I'm not going to talking about elements, source, network, timeline. I'll be going through each of these later on. So first, what is console? Console is basically used to uh, print out uh, different things that that this particular operation have been done or not. And we can also access different variables, but we can also print uh, different things like. Uh, everything that we write in our text editor related to JavaScript uh, we can also do right here we can define variables we can write loops we can define functions and so many other things so if I want to define a variable I can write var a equals to 23 all right and if I press a you can see that it has printed 23 because I have created a variable a all right and same like this I can define an array as well so you can see that I have defined an array and if I press B it has printed all the elements inside that array all right and same as that we can also create different objects we can create uh, a different JSON files uh, and let me write a loop all right if I write loop 
i equals to 0, i less than equals to 10, i plus plus, and I'm going to console log, and a uh, console log is used to print uh, different things. It can be a variable value or if it can be direct string. All right, so I'm going to print i in it, close the brackets, and I'm going to press enter. You can see that it has printed the values from 0 to 10. So we can write all the operations, all the keywords, all the functions that are available in JavaScript. We can also write in this developers console. So I'm gonna just uh, make it empty. Uh, I will click on it, click clear console. All right. So now as I have run this program, if I go and check out its structure, you can see that I have a body element, I have a div element inside body, and I have bunch of other elements uh, inside that div element. So what if I want to select individual element in the that developer window console window to check out if that element contains the accurate value or not so uh, it, you might have different purpose for checking those elements but I just want to show you how to select that particular element all right another thing that I want to show you that I have also included jQuery if I have included jQuery I can also use functions of jQuery inside that console window so what I'll do is I let's add a dollar sign and I will write div all right I'll press enter so you can see that it has brought out div container and it has brought out all the elements that exist inside that div container I have run this program and it has brought out this container and if I want to select um, this element with an ID I can use jQuery because I have included the jQuery file and let's try and dollar and for selecting the ID, if you know jQuery, uh, then it is used to select the ID and I will write container. All right, so you can see that it has brought out the same element that was in my previous statement. All right, now uh, when we run our program, the, uh, the browser creates a document object model. So what is document object model? If we check out our HTML, document object model creates a tree of all those elements that which element is the sibling of which element which element is the parent or child of which element so it creates the relationships among different elements all right so that is available in our console window with a keyword called document all right so you can see that i have entered document and it is showing me all the tree uh, that it was creating it has returned me the head tag all the links it contains it has returned me the body uh, it has returned me all the elements that are inside the body a container and each and everything all right so it's very helpful now let's try this document keyword and fetch out different things so it has different bunch of uh, methods obviously I'm not gonna talking about each one of these if you want to know uh, that what are these please go to the developers.google.com and it's a different uh, reference website you can check out that we can also use document keyword bar uh, for detecting uh, different events for detecting expressions we can also mirror different uh, events and expression we can count different expression so let's do some of these uh, so I'm gonna write if I want to select that input element I can write document dot sell query selector Query selector and I can write that particular element so you can see that it has brought out that input element that it found right here if I want to bring all the input elements from that document object model let's press up arrow key to uh, fetch out the previous statement that we just written in this console window if I keep on pressing it will keep on bringing all the statements that I have written and if I want to bring all the input elements I can write all query selector all so if I press enter you can see that there were two input elements and I have brought out those two input elements if I want to uh, fetch the length of these input elements I can also do it so I can write length and it has shown me two because there were two input elements so there are a bunch of other functions that we can use uh, with the help of document keyword there are some built-in 
uh, shortcuts uh, for selecting different elements so uh, that is double dollar sign that also refers to the document uh, and if I write input and press enter you can see that it has brought out all the input elements uh, of the document object model uh, so I think that is a uh, fine for the introduction that how to use console window uh, let me uh, add a one more thing uh, right here if I write document dot body dot content editable equals to true alright I can do it with any website if it's not mine I will press enter now every content of my website is editable if I go to computer languages you can see that I can add it if I go to degree I can change each and every uh, heading of a blog post I can change the text of any blog post and each and everything all right so I think that was uh, pretty much for uh, showing you the intro of this console window so now let's talk about breakpoints in developers console that we can add different uh, breakpoints and stop the execution of code at any particular uh, statement of our JavaScript code so before uh, talking about the breakpoints let me explain you the logic of this code that I have just opened of my autocomplete uh, drop down in JavaScript uh, so when I hover my cursor uh, what's this let me close it so when I hover my cursor on any of these drop downs this function is called alright and inside this function I have an if condition if the inner HTML of that drop down text box is null or an empty then execute this code I have done it because I want to speed up this work because once I have hover it it populates that drop down with different values of these models languages and degree models and once it populated when I hover my cursor second time it shouldn't come and execute this code again and again so what I want to do is I want to check once I uh, hover my cursor first time it should come inside it all right and when I hover my cursor second time it shouldn't come inside it so I want to check it with the help of breakpoint all right uh, let me run it again all right so I have just run it again now uh, before hovering my cursor on any of these text box let's press F12 open up the developer console and open the script file this is my script file and what I want to do is I want to just uh, click right here on these numbers to activate the breakpoint on this particular statement which is inside this if condition so if I hover my cursor on it it has come because the inner HTML my list was empty inner HTML was uh, it was null or empty so it has come inside it all right and I can check out the different values that I got uh, if I hover my cursor on it source string I have language means I have sent the parameter language uh, to this function all right and I have got the element of HTML and I've got it now I want to end this execution I need to press this again now if I hover my cursor again I need to check it shouldn't come inside this code because this if condition should be false all right because this time that text box is not empty or null so I hover my cursor you can see that it hasn't come inside it so it means that our code is working fine as we expected all right and now let's remove it and I want to reload it and let's enter a breakpoint right here all right now let's hover I have reloaded it uh, now the whole part of this code will be these uh, drop down boxes are empty now so I hover my cursor on it and if I go on the right side I can see the scope the scope of local variables and the scope of global variables I don't have any kind of global variable right here that's why it's showing nothing inside it if I see the local variables I have these arguments that I sent to this function uh, this is the language that I sent to this string uh, and I have my list that is being populated because I have uh, stopped the execution of code right here so it's giving me all the variables that are above this statement alright 
updated values of variables i can also check individual value of variables by hovering my cursor on it all right so you can see that it has showing me the base uri it's, it's showing me the attributes if i want to see the object it's showing me different uh values that are being populated inside that drop down box all right i can check out individual variable all right so now the interesting thing of these uh, breakpoints is that if i reload my page this breakpoint will exist right here all right i wanna just click on it and I, if i hover my cursor again on it you can see that it's not coming in but i want to see that in the second text box i haven't hover my cursor uh, yet it should come inside it because the my list of the inner html of the second text box is empty all right so i just hover my cursor you can see that it has come and let me check out the source string so you can see the source string is degree all right and i have different values of these variables all right so let's go and run it again so in the both text boxes i'm not just uh triggering that breakpoint because both the text boxes have been populated with these elements all right and now another thing that i want to show you if i go to console all right you can see there is a populated word shown and before that there is a two what is doing if i want to print anything inside the function inside any uh, condition as in statement i can log that value i can log any variable or a simple string so i have console.log populated right here it means whenever this code executed it should print this value populated inside the console window so i populated for the languages and degree all right so that's why it's printed two times over there so let me just reload it uh, and see if uh, this big point exists there or not so let's reload it so you can see that it is reloaded i can uh, add breakpoints at many places inside the loops inside uh, the api calls there is a, some tricky trick that i'll be talking further later on uh, that how to detect and uh, uh, stop the execution by adding the breakpoints on the api calls Another thing and last thing of breakpoints that I want to show you is the debugger. Uh, if there, if you are unable to enter into the breakpoint triggering, uh, there's a keyword you can also add. Let me add right here. So I want to add debugger. So in order to see the changes, I need to reload the page. And you can see there's a debugger i don't need to uh, activate the breakpoint right here if i reload it you can see that it hasn't triggered yet because it's inside this function i need to call this function so i hover my cursor on it you can see that whenever there is a debugger it will stop the execution at that particular point so now everything that is above that debugger i can check out the value of those so source object uh, right here so string is language uh, I'm converting it. I'm not going to teach you what is JavaScript. You must already know for learning and going through with this tutorial. Uh, so now let's leave it. It's not coming inside if condition. Let's just check it. So you, we can add any uh, number of debuggers in our code if there is if we are unable to uh, activate the breakpoint at that particular point. So now next, uh, let's talk about the conditional breakpoints. I mean. Uh, that stop the execution of code when any particular condition meet like if i want to say if uh, my list uh, the length of my list is greater than 10 then stop this particular statement otherwise keep on executing the code so let's try and add the breakpoint with the condition so now let's talk about conditional breakpoints in javascript so before proceeding further, uh, I'll just activate a breakpoint right here uh, and I'll show you that it will keep on stopping the execution as the length of this object list. So if, if I hover right over here, it's actually on the debugger. Let's keep on it. You can see that 
right now the option is empty because it's the first time it has entered this loop if I click on this blue button it has entered it have executed this loop second time and if I hover my cursor on it you can see that option have a value Java in it all right and if I reload it again and you can see that it has value PHP and Java both so it will keep on executing unless the length of the list so it has length 9 so it will execute 9 times now I want to stop the execution of program when the options variable is empty all right otherwise it shouldn't stop right here so I'll reload it all right and go to script and I will right click over here and edit breakpoint and it will ask me to enter the condition so I will enter if options equals to empty then stop we can also add and or uh, different operators in here I'll press enter you can see that it is now a conditional breakpoint actually it should be right here let's edit it so options equals to empty all right now I will hover my cursor on it it has stopped all right and if I hover my cursor on it you can see that it is empty all right so it's matching that condition of breakpoint now if I click on this icon it hasn't stopped because the next time the options wasn't empty so that condition didn't match with the value of that option so this is how we can stop the breakpoint based on conditions so now another thing that I want to let you know that we have different event listener breakpoints if you go to the right side and see there are event listener breakpoints we have DOM breakpoints that we can't we can't set directly from uh, JavaScript it can be set from the HTML that I'm not going to talk about because this is the JavaScript tutorial we can also set the breakpoints in XHR that is based on basically the Ajax request uh, and right now let's talk about the event listener breakpoints all right L I have activated the mouse event listener breakpoint it means whenever I'll click anywhere on this application on this tab this event will fire so I'll go right here and click on it you can see that event mouse event have been clicked you can see it if I hover my cursor on it and it's showing me all the properties that exist on that layer it's showing me the position that I have clicked on it's showing me uh, the see if it's a single click or double click uh, so this is how we can activate different breakpoints using these checkboxes so now next uh, we'll talk about uh, the step over step into and step out of the current functions all right so I've entered in uh, different breakpoints on different statements inside this function and if I hold my cursor on it you can see that it has triggered first breakpoint if I click on this blue button resume button it will uh, leave the execution of this particular breakpoint and it will stop whenever it will find the next breakpoint so I'll click on it you can see that it has found this breakpoint it has stopped right here if I click on again it has found this one so this resume button uh, end up the execution of breakpoints of uh, uh, any particular one uh, and stop the execution of program where it finds the next breakpoint now I just want to remove two breakpoints and reload the page and hover my cursor again on it all right now this is step over this is means that if I click on it it will keep on executing each and everything line by line if I see the source object it has nothing if I click it again I have data list in my file I have options empty and if I keep on clicking on it you can see that as the execution of program goes inside our program it will keep on executing that program in that particular manner all right so uh, our prom program execute this loop for uh, nine times so it will keep on executing this nine times again all right and right now we are in this function all right and what if I want to end up uh, the execution of this function everything inside here everything below this breakpoint uh, should be exempted uh, I I can do it by clicking on step out of 
current function if I click on it you can see that I called that populate function from that HTML file right here and it has ended up that function at stopped us right here after completing that function so whenever we want to uh, take the execution of program out of any particular function we can click on it step out now what is step in let me reload the function and I have uh, created a new function right here to print the populated in the console and I have called this function from right here all right and if I hold my cursor on it you can see that if I keep on let me come to the populated caller all right so I came here right here and after I clicked on it it enters into the next line what if I want to enter into the function that is being called from here I can do it with the step into let me reload it all right and I will stop right here and leave it you can see that it has stopped right here if I click on it it will uh, start from the next line if I click on step into it will enter into that populated function so let me click on it so you can see that it has entered entered into this populated function all right if I step over again it has gone back to the caller and it has started the execution of program from the next statement where it was called so uh, this was uh, I hope that you have liked it and uh, it can be very helpful in my every application that I developed in JavaScript I use these three tools uh, while debugging my JavaScript programs so that was pretty much it for this tutorial uh, if you want to write JavaScript code uh, in a more accurate way I would recommend you to learn writing unit tests for JavaScript I'm going to be making tutorial on writing unit tests that's going to be essential training uh, and when I develop anything in my team or myself uh, I prefer to write unit test of that product all right unit test helps really well for maintaining large projects that we develop uh, so I hope that you have liked it make sure to subscribe this channel for more videos for more tutorials and comment below if you have any question thanks for watching this video